Hey, how's it going everybody? So I'm gonna be doing an operating system install. Probably not that big of a deal. I think most people have probably installed Linux before. But uh, I just kinda of wanted to d demonstrate the reason why I really appreciated uh, Pop! OS. Uh, now Pop! OS is an Ubuntu derivative. So it's basically Ubuntu, but you know, System76, the team over there, they've added a couple of nice things that to me makes it so smooth. And I, I know there's uh, you know different reasons why everybody picks the, the distro that they like, but for me, in this instance, it's all about convenience. That's why basically why I choose Ubuntu. Uh, I don't want to prove to the world that I'm a super duper elite hacks or you know awesome kitty scripter or whatever. I don't care. I just want to install my operating system and use it for what I want to use it for. And that can be anything from, you know, programming to playing some video games or sending email, web browsing, just all those, those types of things. And uh, whatever gets me there the quickest is what I want to use. Now, with that being said, do I think things like Arch or Linux from scratch or Gen 2 are completely useless? No, I think they're actually pretty awesome. And if I had time, like I did when I was in college, when I actually, you know, played with Linux from scratch and I actually compiled a lot of software just to get a feel for it, then I, I would say go for it. There, there's just so much time savings to be had for me using Debian and Ubuntu derivatives like Pop! OS. Now, the main thing that I really loved about Pop! OS, which is something I'll show you in my video, is when I download the ISO, it already has the NVIDIA driver. So that's just one less step I have to worry about. And then the second thing that I think is absolutely critical, I don't know why it's not included in the graphics drivers PPA, like the official graphics drivers PPA. So I think it's official. There's some news articles that were released saying that Ubuntu was gonna pick up the, the PPA and it was gonna be an official PPA, but I don't know if that ever came to pass or if that's true or not. But anyway, why don't they include CUDA and all the CUDA related libraries inside that PPA? If you if you need one of those drivers, sometimes maybe you're not doing it for specifically for gaming or because you have a new graphics card. Maybe you're doing it because you need that extra performance or you need it for some other library that requires a higher version of CUDA. Now, I've looked around. I haven't found any other better methods. Now, when I was looking at, you know, Ask Ubuntu, I'm pretty active on Ask Ubuntu. There was like five, 10 answers for this question. And this question is, how do you install CUDA? And everybody wants to install CUDA now for machine learning. Um, you know, some people want to install it because they need to do, you know, Unity or game programming, Unreal Engine programming. So all these things, they, they need CUDA for that. But the only way to install it is with NVIDIA's installer. Now, I was running Ubuntu on my system and I downloaded the installer from NVIDIA. I installed it on 16.04, worked perfectly. No problems at all. And it was still working perfectly after I did my upgrade from that LTS to 18.04, that LTS, the newer LTS. And it was still working perfectly, but it was using uh, CUDA 9 and it was, uh, I think, the driver version was 396 or something like that. So it was outdated. I wasn't be gonna be able to use uh, the newer version of TensorFlow, TensorFlow 2.0. I wasn't gonna be able to gain some of the speed improvements uh, that were being released. So it was a big drop in the ball, in my opinion, on something that seems so trivial. I mean, I'm not, I don't do a, lot, a whole lot of packaging. Maybe there's some intricacies there that make it more difficult, but all these big companies, it seems like they could get one person or even two from different companies to work together to package CUDA into a PPA or even official repo. Like uh, they have Ubuntu Make, you know, you can download PyCharm from Ubuntu Make, all your development tools from, from those locations. So I don't know why they haven't done it. But anyway, why I like Pop! OS is they include a one, you know, command, install, one liner, boom, you install it all, no problem, easy. Right? Well, apparently not because these simple things that are, you know, what I consider to be kind of mission critical desktop things. I don't know what other important things are difficult on Linux anymore that need to be added. If you have some things you want to add, add them in the comment description 
So I'd like to hear about it. Um, but you know, printers work, everything works. So this is one of the only little kind of gotchas. I mean, even for the most part, Ubuntu uh, drivers, they work fine. You don't have to install the latest ones unless you're trying to run some wine gaming stuff. Uh, Lutris will give you some warning messages if you're not running the absolute latest drivers. Proton just got released from Steam. So Linux gaming is actually getting pretty cool. So I think this is definitely an area of weakness and it, it lends credence to the reasons why people say Canonical doesn't care about the desktop anymore, which I have no idea. I don't know the people that work there. I don't know enough about them to make a determination. I mean, it kind of would seem like that because they dropped the Ubuntu phone, Ubuntu TV, they dropped uh, Unity. I mean, all of the things that made it like uh, a really custom experience they dropped. Now, now we have to deal with GNOME. Anyway, <laughs> I won't get started on that. But this is a video about Pop! OS and why I like Pop! OS. I'm just gonna make it short here and show you the desktop and then you can kind of see the installation process which actually on my laptop the gigabyte aero 15x i couldn't install vanilla ubuntu on it it didn't work it failed but pop os installed no problem it was easy so i think uh, there's definitely some more polish that uh, pop os has done and it works really well for laptops so i was going to try it out on my desktop and see if that little bit of extra polish uh, just makes my life easier. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so I don't have a display capture card right now, so this is gonna have to do. But basically, this is the login uh, for your language selection. This is the initial part. It's just you select the language that you want. Say you're from the United States, you're from the United States, or you know wherever you're from. English keyboard layout. If you've installed Linux, you've seen this, you know, a hundred times. It's pretty basic. It's taking a second. It's got to read from a CD. And yes, I still have like, I had a hundred stack of CDs, so I had to do something with them. So I've just been burning CDs like crazy until I run out. 